Well, God bless all of you that are in right now. I'm so sorry for for the delay. We are back on. Let me know, please, if it's clear, if it's choppy, if you can hear me, if everything is good on this end, because we just had a massive malfunction. And I don't know. I don't really know what just happened, but let me know if everything is OK now. Is everything OK now? Can y'all? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all see me? Is everything clear as day? Everything clear? It's it's going to be powerful tonight, so make sure you share. The devil did not want this to happen. And if you want it to be more clear, you can you can click the settings bu button and go to uh, quality and go to higher picture quality. Okay, and go to 21, 2160p. You can go there and it will be more clear over there all right but i'm excited tonight uh to be able to minister to you all uh what god has put on my heart and what many people are struggling with so give me um do me the favor of going ahead and sharing this with somebody right now so they can be a part of this powerful teaching tonight because i believe that not not only are you going to receive insight but i believe that you're going to also receive deliverance okay you also receive deliverance in the name of jesus and your mind will be set free by reason of the blood of jesus your mind will be set free we got my beautiful wife in the building got my beautiful wife up in here it's gonna be good it's gonna be good i'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to do so then we will begin. Give me one moment. Okay. Perfect. We're ready to get this started. Um, I was about to honestly give up because I was like, yo, there's no way I prepared this teaching today. You know, I've been sick and I've been really wanting to teach this since last week. Um, but me and my family, we fell sick. My wife got sick. I was sick. I couldn't do the live stream. I had to take care of my wife. And then I was taking care of her. Then I got sick and I was out for a few days. Um, but now I'm back. I'm back in Jesus name to pray, to release the word of the Lord. So like I said, share this with somebody tonight. Um, is the music too loud? Is the music too loud? Is it, is it at a good um, place right now? Is the music at a good place? Let me know um, so we can get this going. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Okay. And it's late. It's 1030. It's late. It's 1030. So it's good. Okay. Because this is the time when a lot of y'all get intrusive thoughts um, to masturbate, to watch porn, to do um, all that crazy stuff. So we are going to um, go ahead. All right. So um, so tonight, my beautiful people of God, uh, we will be focusing on, I'll be teaching on intrusive thoughts. All right. We'll be focusing on intrusive thoughts tonight. And this is something that a lot of people are actually battling with. So intrusive thoughts are actually, it's actually something that many believers are dealing with. You understand me? It is something that many believers are dealing with. But before we begin, um, I'm going to open this up in prayer. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you for this time, God, that we are here, Father God, um, in one accord. Father, your word says if two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in thy midst. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are here, Father. 
We thank you because your presence is here, God. And we pray, God, that you would speak, that you would move, that your power, Father God, will be present in the name of Jesus, that there will be no distractions. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. Who is ready to pray? Who is ready to learn? Who is ready to be delivered? Who is ready to intercede in this hour? Make sure that you make sure that you make sure that you like you share and make sure you um you like the live stream all right make sure you like the live stream because it's gonna be absolutely powerful someone said there was a pause was there a pause at all did anything go blackout or anything y'all are ready y'all are ready and before we do that, make sure that you like the live streams, click the like button and whatnot, and we will begin. We will begin. Oh, Shabra Dozi. Hallelujah. Okay. So tonight, my people, we're going to be dealing with intrusive thoughts we're going to be focusing on intrusive thoughts we're going to be focusing on intrusive thoughts now there are many people that are that are dealing with wars within the mind they're dealing with wars within the mind and they feel like there's voices. They feel like they cannot stop sinning because there's these thoughts, these unwanted thoughts. You must understand that intrusive thoughts are unwanted thoughts that can pop into our heads without warning at any time. Okay. They're often repetitive with the same kind of thought popping up again again and again and they can be disturbing or even distressing okay so the word intrusive comes from the latin word intruder intrudere which means to thrust or push so the word intrusive comes from the, a latin word intrudere I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right but it comes from that latin word and it means to thrust or to push so something is being thrusted or pushed into your mind. Intrusive thoughts thrust and push their way into your mind. They have an agenda to override your way of thinking. And these unwanted thoughts will lay down a demonic mental foundation so you yield to sin. The purpose of these thoughts are to influence you into sin. It is to invade and alter and shift your way of thinking. You know, before anyone falls into sin, they first deal with a intrusive thought. They never planned to sin, but suddenly a thought came when they were alone in their bedroom. That is called an invasion. You see, intrusive thoughts come from a demonic spirit of influence intrusive thoughts come from a demonic spirit of influence this spirit of influence is the exact spirit that influenced eve to eat the apple hear me very well intrusive thoughts come from a demonic spirit of influence the spirit of this this spirit of influence is the exact spirit that influenced eve to eat the apple okay now we go to genesis chapter 3 verse 1 through 24. now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the lord god had made he said to the woman did god actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, 
lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, one thing you must grasp and understand here is that the serpent invited himself in Eve's presence. He was not invited. So it's not like Eve gave Satan an invitation. It's not like Eve gave the serpent an invitation. The serpent just came. The devil just came and invaded Eve's space. The serpent was 100% a intrusive being that had the agenda to steal, kill, and destroy by speaking lies and tempting Eve to do something God told her not to do. So Satan had the objective to invade to intrude into the mind and reasoning of Eve to, to seduce her into doing things that God told her not to do. You see, that's how, this is how intrusive thoughts work. This is how they work. It's an invasion of ungodly thoughts that appear uninvited, that are against the will of God. So when you're dealing with an intrusive thought, it is an invasion. It appears out of nowhere. It pops out of nowhere with the intent to lead you into sin. Because why is it that many Christians are dealing with intrus with demonic intrusive thoughts, but they're not getting the voice of the Lord to tell them to do the good thing. But the majority of what they're hearing is the bad thing. Commit suicide. Hate this person. Uh, you're ugly. You know, people say this, all these intrusive thoughts, but nothing of what the word of God says about them. You understand me? Satan was a intrusive being. He came to Eve and he told her, you know, you're not going to die. Eat the apple. You will be like God. Do it. Do it. Invading her mind, giving her intrusive thoughts. You see, Judas... The one, who the one who betrayed Jesus killed himself because he was dealing with intrusive thoughts. He repented for betraying Jesus, but he allowed the voices of shame, guilt, and condemnation to drive him to suicide. Ask yourself, what made Judas kill himself? What made him kill himself? There was voices in his mind that did not only lead him to betray Jesus, but to also kill himself. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, verse three through five, then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? See it to yourself. Okay. So they were like, they were like, you know, we don't care. See it to yourself. So Judas became convicted. Condemnation came upon him. He was convicted. Then condemnation came. He's like, man, I just, I just, uh, 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 I just betrayed innocent blood. So he began to feel condemned, not only convicted, but he began to feel condemned. Then verse five says, and throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and he went and hung himself. So Judas was actually, he condemned himself. He was mad. He was angry. He threw the pieces of silver to the ground and there was an inner voice. There was an intrusive thought that said, you're condemned. You just betrayed innocent blood. You're a horrible person. Jesus did all these things for you and you did this for money. He began to feel condemned. Now a voice spoke to him. A voice intruded. A voice had the, had the, uh, the legality to enter his mind because he sinned. Because he chased it after, he chased after mammon. He chased after money. He betrayed uh, innocent blood. And because of that, Satan had legal rights 
to invade his mind to lead him into suicide. Suicide was not on Judas's mind until he saw Jesus being condemned. And when he saw Jesus being condemned, something within him, a voice just started speaking to him and saying, look what you did. There was an intrusion in his mind that said, look what you have done. And then he came to his senses and he said, I repent. And he threw the pieces of silver and he said, I don't want this. But the chief priests were basically saying it's too late. And Judas understood that he could do nothing. So he went to go and hang himself. You see, suicide is, is not something that just happens. Okay? Suicide is, is, is not something that just happens. It is a voice in the mind that starts off small, but gets louder and more consistent the more you do, do not rebuke it and dislodge it with prayer and fasting. This, you don't just wake up one morning and you say, mm, I want to commit suicide. You must understand that there was a reason to you wanting to commit suicide. There was a voice telling you that you're fat, that you're ugly, that you ain't got no type of money, you can't pay your rent, you can't do something, you can't do these things. You didn't just wake up and say, I want to commit suicide. There was a reason why you want to commit suicide. And that thought, that process has been in your mind. You've been hearing that from a spirit. You've been hearing it from the spirit. You see, the reason, listen to this. The reason he fell to the intrusion, to the intrusion of Satan was because she entertained his voice. She listened and imagined how good it will be. Listen to me very well. The reason he fell to the invasion, the intrusion of Satan is because she entertained his voice. She listened and imagined how good it will be. You see, when the devil is working against you and he comes with intrusive thoughts, if you entertain the thought, you've already lost. Because that thought has now become a seed, daily, a seed progressively. Okay, the Bible says this in Genesis chapter three, verse six. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. You see, Eve imagined how good it would taste and how pleasant it would be to be like God through these imaginations. So before Eve ate the apple, she entertained the voice of the devil. She entertained the intrusion of Satan. And then when Satan began to speak to her mind and give her intrusive thoughts, she began to entertain those things and imagine how good it will be. Now through her imagination, she gave birth to sin. Because she did not rebuke the devil's intrusive voice. Do you understand what I'm saying? You must deal with your imaginations because much of it is influenced by the voice of the enemy. The only reason he fell was because she entertained the voice of the enemy. She didn't fall just because the devil was there and he spoke. She didn't fall just because the serpent was there and, and, and then whatever, and he spoke. No, it was because she entertained his voice. And when you entertain wickedness, when you entertain sexual immorality, when you entertain the works of the flesh, what begins to happen is that seed that was planted begins to give life. And now what happens is, is an imagination is birthed. There now becomes an imagination and you see the picture and then you commit fornication. And then now you see the picture and now you know how to kill yourself. You must deal with your imaginations because most of it is influenced by the voice of the enemy. Did you, can you not, can you not see the picture right here? Satan and Eve side by side. Adam wasn't saying nothing. It was a time of silence between Eve and, and, and Satan. And he began to speak to her. 
and Eve didn't have anyone to edify her or to rebuke her. It was, she was just alone in that, in that time. And that's how the devil works with you in your room. When you're isolated, you don't have someone to tell you no. You don't have someone to edify you. You don't have someone to rebuke you. So the devil capitalizes on your loneliness. The devil capitalizes on you being by yourself. So because once he gets to your mind, you will do things because no one else will tell you not to do it. Because there's nobody around you because you're on your you're on your lonely. You're by yourself. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down imaginations. Did you know before, did you know that before anyone sins, they imagine it? Hey! Before anyone sins habitually, they imagine it. Their mind processes how good it will feel, how good it will be. So the issue with you is that you're you imagining it, you entertaining the voice and allowing imaginations, ungodly imaginations to be birthed. Now the word imagination means the act or the act or power of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly, per, wholly perceived in reality. Imagination is like the creative ability. So you are creating these imaginations in your mind because of the voice of the enemy, because you have entertained the voice of the enemy. Or when someone says you're fat and you're ugly and you're stupid and you're never going to make it in life, you begin to imagine those things. You're listening to those voices. You didn't bring those voices into captivity, but you imagine those voices. You let it replay in your mind, replay. You entertain those things. You believed what they said and you it came to imagination. Then fear began to birth and all these negative qualities begin to birth and worry and anxiety. Before you know it, you are depressed and you have created these things within your mind because you entertained what someone said about you. And imagination is the creative ability, the act or power of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. So before Eve ate the apple, she listened, before Eve ate the fruit, she listened to the voice of the devil even though she never tasted it to see if it's good, even though she, she didn't get wise by just looking at it, she imagined herself being wise and being like God. She imagined how good it would taste because she entertained the voice of the devil. And through that imagination, it gave birth to sin. You see, intrusive thoughts are not the problem. It's the entertaining of it and allowing a mental picture to be created. Nothing can be created unless it's imagined. Think about it. Anything that exists today, it was first imagined. They first had to get a piece of, they first had to get a piece of paper and then have a blueprint. And with that blueprint, they are writing down their imaginations of how this house should be built, these foundations, how we should build the city wall, how we should build the gates and the doors. And then that imagination now begins to manifest and become a reality. Nothing can be created unless it's imagined. Sin cannot be acted out unless it is imagined. This is why a lot of people sit in a place of silence and contemplating if they should masturbate, contemplating if they should watch porn. When I used to really be addicted to masturbation and pornography, I would sit on my bed five to 10 minutes contemplating, thinking about the pros and the cons as if there is any pros. But my mind was imagining how good it will feel and how I can repent later. And there was cons and were negative things where I was like, man, what if the coming of the Lord happened right now? What if I died right now? What if I get attacked by demons? So I was, I was weighing the pros and the cons, but my flesh won every time. Why? Because I entertained the thought and the pleasure. 
And that pleasure and that thought gave life to an imagination. And I began to picture myself and saying, mm, this is gonna be good, mm, this is gonna feel good. And the imagination took over. This is why the Bible tells us to set our minds on things above and not the things of the earth. Because when you set your mind on things of the earth, you will always fall victim or pray or yield to the things of this earth. You will always yield to the flesh. And this is why the Bible says in the book of Colossians that we must set our minds on the things that are above. And you must understand that things cannot be imagined unless you entertain the thought or the advice of another person. Let me say it again. Things cannot be imagined unless you entertain the thought or the advice of another person. Okay? So the verse I gave you about casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, if you go to the verse before that, It says this in verse four, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So what's the, the picture of verse four and five together is telling us that these things are strongholds. Intrusive thoughts are seeds that are awaiting to be planted and rooted and then become mental strongholds. Intrusive thoughts are seeds. It's spiritual warfare. The devil's attacking you, okay? That are are awaiting to be planted. See, just because you have an, an intrusive thought does not mean it's rooted in your mind. It does not mean it's planted. You can say, I, I command, I, I condemn you in Jesus' name. I rebuke you now. Mm, it leaves. It's gone. But when you entertain it and you act upon it and you imagine it, now you're allowing it to be watered. Now you're lo- allowing this bad fruit to be uh, uh, manifested in your mind. Then this will turn into a mental stronghold where you feel like you cannot control them. And now this spirit is blinding you from your identity and your authority in Christ. Before that became a stronghold, before that sin was an addiction, there was a thought. There was a thought that told you to masturbate, to smoke weed. There was a thought for you to overeat and you were ignoring that thought for a while in your youth. You were ignoring it for a while and one for a while. And then one night, one day, you said, mm, let me try to let me listen to the voice of the enemy. But your mistake, Kanzobredozavrande, your mistake is before was that when those intrusive thoughts came, you just ignored it. You ignored it. You didn't break its legal rights. You didn't cancel it in the name of Jesus. Because it, it can be generational. It could be something you never dealt with. And they're evading and they're attacking you and it's spiritual warfare and you're not going into prayer and fasting and these intrusive thoughts been with you since your childhood and you've just been ignoring and ignoring till one day you got fed up and said let me satisfy my flesh and when you get to a place of satisfying your flesh your mind begins to flare with these feel-good hormones called endorphins and dopamines, where your mind tells you that this feels good. So the imagination and now the feelings comes together and now you feel like you're in a place of addiction. And what this intrusive thought begins to do, it begins to steal your identity and authority in Christ progressively, daily, until you get to a place where you're like, I can't control myself. Until you get to a place where you're like, the voices are too strong. Until you get to a place and you say, I can't stop fornicating. I can't stop doing this. It is a veil of darkness that has been placed upon you and you have been seduced daily. And these spirits have told you that you do not have the capacity to control your hands from putting, from, from being perverse. You cannot control your hands from masturbating and watch your, watching porn. You cannot control your hands from going on www.porn.com. You cannot control yourself. It is a veil of darkness. It is a lie of the enemy. Because when intrusive thoughts come, they, you understand that these thoughts are make-believe. 
They want you to believe there are fairy tales being placed within your mind. There are temptations being placed against your mind. You must understand this. All intrusive thoughts are is aggressive voices of temptation. Hey, all intrusive thoughts are is aggressive voices of temptation. Whether to overeat, whether to kill yourself, whether to cuss someone, whether to lie, cheat, steal. It is a, an aggressive thought of temptation. The thoughts that appear in your mind have the objective to lead you into sin. If something is repeated over and over again in your mind, it can become believable. And you may just want to do it. And that's why it's imperative that we renew the spirits of our mind. See, if you do not rebuke and dislodge and go into prayer and fasting when you have intrusive thoughts, you got to understand that one day you're going to believe it and do it because it's spiritual warfare. It's continually coming. If you just ignore it one day, it will be repeating in your life, in your mind and you will do it. You know what an intrusive thought is? It is when it is when you're with your friends and your friends are like, man, come on, just smoke weed. Come on, get drunk tonight. And you're like, nah, I'm not going to do it, man. Come on, man, get drunk tonight, man. Do it, man. Look, look, they're showing you all the videos. Come on, look at all these girls in the club, man. They half naked and they're showing you all the videos. You're like, nah, man. But your flesh is like, mm, I really want to do it. And you're being conditioned daily. Hearing the voices, you're being tempted daily. Your morals are being uh, taken away, stripped of you daily, daily, daily. You're being processed daily. Even though you're not doing it, what's happening is you're being conditioned. And you keep hanging out with these friends and they are really intrusive voices coming against your morality, coming against your convictions. And you keep staying around them till one day you become an you become a product of your intrusive friends. This is why the Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. Bad company corrupts good morals. Because those friends will intrude your mind and shift your way of thinking. This is why it's imperative that we renew the spirits of our minds. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter four, verse 20 through 24, but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, you cannot overcome the works of the flesh unless you renew the spirit of your mind. You see, a lot of people think, man of God, I, I can't stop masturbating or watching porn unless I go through deliverance. That's a doctrines of demons. Because the Bible says that each person should learn to control their own flesh in holiness and honor. Now, when, it, when you have the Holy Spirit, a demon cannot possess you, which means a, de a demon cannot take your free will. A demon cannot make you do what you don't want to do. The, 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 the problem is that you are spiritually weak. You do not have the knowledge of the word of God because it is the knowledge of the word of God that uh, helps you to understand your identity and your authority in Christ to cast out demons. Jesus said, I've given you the spiritual authority to trample over the scorpions and the snakes. Uh, so if you have the authority to cast out demons, how much more do you have the authority to look at your flesh and say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I have control over my hands in Jesus name. But you've been taught that the reason you're masturbating is because of a demon. But the first day you, you, you masturbated, it wasn't because of a demon. It's because of you. The spirit of masturbation, any, any, any spirit, when, when it enters your body, it has entered because it has been invited. Yes, things can be generational. Even if it's, a, if it's generational, the devil cannot force you to do anything. You cannot overcome the works of the flesh 
unless you renew the spirit of your mind by the word of God and prayer. The Bible says, do not submit again to the yoke of slavery, which means you have the, you have the ability to go through deliverance and resubmit to slavery. slavery. Do you know how many people I've brought through deliverance? They get free and they go back to living in sin. So it's not the fact that it's demons. It's the fact that you're dealing with intrusive thoughts that you are not bringing down into captivity. You're dealing with intrusive thoughts. You're dealing with imaginations that you are not bringing down. You're entertaining the voice of your friends and your and, and the enemy. You're following lustful accounts on your show, social media. So the enemy is just intruding, intruding, intruding in your mind. You can be demon free and still deal with in, in, an intrusive thought because it's an ex external force. It's an external force that begins to attack you internally. You see, your old ways can be birthed in your life again if you do not renew your minds and rebuke the voices that come against your minds. You see, let's say you're, you're, with, you're fully delivered of demons and you're, you're fully delivered from prostitution. But you go and you hang around with your prostitute friends, okay? And your prostitute friends are like tempting you to go sleep with this guy or this girl. And then you end up doing it. Tell me, was that a demon? Oh man, I got to need deliverance again. No, 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 no. You just need to cut off every person or thing that is intruding and messing with your convictions messing with your morality there are people that you need to cut off there, there are social media accounts and, and people you follow that you must unfollow there are numbers you need to delete listen if you are not willing to fight back against these voices you will be a victim every day, every day. You see, you have the authority to overcome and win. Don't sit here and tell me you don't have the authority. I don't care how many demons are in your body. If you tell me you don't have the authority to stop masturbating, you already lost. You're already done. Because I remember when I used to struggle with all this intrusive thoughts, all this sinful stuff. I will hit up all these men of God. I'm struggling with porn. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. But at the end of the day, I was the one sinning. And I was dealing with intrusive thoughts where a spirit will come and lay on top of me. And it will come and make me feel lustful. And you're feeling all these like senses and tingling feelings in your body. And it wants you to sin and your body wants it too. But your mind is trying to fight back but you feel like you don't have control. And one, and one night in that encounter where the spirit was on top of me and it was trying to lead me into, into, into sexual sin, I lifted up my hands and I said, who has control of my body? Who had, there was a fight going on in my flesh and my mind. I, I raised my hand and I said, I have control of my body. And while I'm saying this, I'm still feeling the spirit and the, the, the urge is on me. And I look at my hands and I feel a demon on me. And I'm looking at my hands, who has control? And I stood up off my bed and I looked at my hands, I have control. And I begin to pray, Reban, Shole, Lidio, come on, say, that spirit left. When you feel an intrusive thought, or when you feel a spirit come upon you to say, kill yourself, and you pick up the gun, look at that gun and ask yourself, who has control of this gun? Look at your hands and says, who has control of these hands? Once you understand this, you drop it and you say, mm, the devil is a liar. Because it's it, it is easier than you think. But because we don't know the word of God, we don't know our, our, our identity and authority. Because we keep entertaining those voices. Because we do not spend time in worship and fasting to kill the flesh. Did you know that fasting is not only about just killing the flesh? but it's killing the intrusive thoughts that have been rooted in your mind because some of you are dealing with shame and guilt and all these things and I'm fat and I'm ugly because of what other people told you and it's now been planted in your mind. 
now when you begin to read the word of god and you fast and you pray the the the, the intrusive thoughts that have been planted in your mind begin to be dislodged they begin to be renewed re removed and then your mind begins to be renewed by the spirit of the lord jesus and the lord begins to tell you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made that you are mine and i have a purpose for you but if you continue to listen what your baby daddy told you or your baby mommy told you you will stay a victim and you will open up the door to an evil spirit to enhance those thoughts The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. The Bible says you have the power over all of the enemy. Did you know self-deliverance works? So if you think, man of God, I can't do nothing until I get delivered. You can, the Bible says you have all authority. You can look at your body and say, in the name of Jesus. Hey, shakata. I overcame sexual sin with me and God. Nobody laying hands or mentoring me, me and God. I battled it for years. Especially being someone that was a pro basketball player, playing on ESPN, Division One basketball in Tennessee, doing all those things. I was introduced to these things when I was 19. Then it took over. And I had to fight. So even when the intrusive thought comes, the Bible says you will have power over the enemy, over all the enemy. Luke chapter nine, verse one. And he called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to cure diseases. So my question is, even though you're dealing with fear, do you have the authority over fear? Do you have the authority over shame? Do you have the authority over guilt? Do you, do you have the authority over suicidal thoughts? Or are you going to sit there and cry wolf and saying, oh my God, I'm having these thoughts. Are you just going to, that's what the devil wants. He wants you to sit in your bed and cry and imagine those things. So he speaks to you. And you're imagining everything your, your wife said. You're imagining everything your husband said. And you're sitting there crying for the last two hours. And you're imagining and imagining, imagining. And these voices and depression comes. And everything's adding and adding and adding. And then you kill yourself. And then you go fornicate. Or you go masturbate and watch porn. And you, and you, you, get, a, you, get, a, you get a little bit of relief. You think you're a little bit of relief. And you fall asleep. And then now you're in a cycle. Because now you become dependent upon that thing to be your antidepressant. So now you're a slave to a demon that you think is the antidepressant. Now I want to help you with something here. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. No temptation. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind and God is faithful he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear but when you are tempted he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it but people are so demon conscious to the point where they say I can't stop masturbating because I have a demon the demon can be casted out, but it will come back if you keep entertaining the sin. So there is no intrusive thought that is not common to mankind. There is no suicidal thought that is not common to mankind. There is no intrusive thought of shame, guilt, masturbation that is not common to mankind. The Bible says God has created a way of escape. It's either you start understanding your identity and your authority in Christ or you continually be a victim. It's one of the two. It's one of the two. Why are there survivors of suicide? 
Why are there survivors that were on a bridge? And the truce of thought told them to jump off. But in the last moment, they didn't jump. What made them not jump? Free will. An inner voice that said, don't do this. What made those people that had the gun to their head not shoot themselves? And what made them put the gun to their head? There were two voices. You see, many of you are dealing with intrusive thoughts. Many of you are dealing with intrusive thoughts that are sourced from the past. And this can cause your mind to have relapses of traumatic events, fear, sexual immorality, and other forms of ungodliness. Okay, the devil will try to remind you of the things that you once loved, of the things that felt good, and he will use your past against you so you yield to sin once again. Now, there are a form of intrusive thoughts that come from the place of the devil reminding you or your mind and the dopamines and the endorphins are going off and they're like, mm, I want to feel good. So when you open up the door to porn, and you've never had intrusive thoughts of porn before. But when you open up that pore, that, that door, what happens is that there will come a time where the enemy will, will remind you of how good you felt. He will remind you of all of these things. And you, if you don't deal with it, you will do it again. Because you must understand that the devil is a familiar spirit the devil is a familiar power the bible says that the enemy roams around the earth looking for him whom he may devour in the book of job uh, satan was walking around and god said to satan satan what have you been doing satan said i've been going up and down the earth watching what's going on okay so satan himself is familiar with humanity He's familiar with the whole world. He's familiar how, how um, humans operate, their weaknesses, their strengths. He has an understanding. He understands your past and your weaknesses and whatnot. So when you open up the door to the devil, according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, give no opportunity to the devil. When you open up that door, the devil will take note of what you just did and how it made you feel good. And him being a familiar power, he will send his demons. He will send his workers. He will send a woman to your school, so a man to your work. And there will be familiar spirits working to put you back in the place that you willingly walked into. Because when you give the, door, the devil an opportunity in your life, he will use the sin that you did against you in the future. And he will try to bring you back to that place. But the devil can't bring you into, he, the devil can't bring you back into a place you never were in. When the devil brings you back into a place, he's bringing you into a place that you willingly entered. So he's now using it against you to remind you, to bring you back. Okay, this is why the Bible tells us here. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So familiar spirits are demon powers. So false prophets, when they begin to prophesy or tell you accurate things about your life, you must understand and notice that false prophets always spend the time of the past. They'll tell you your last name, what happened to you. They'll tell you that only the present and the past. And that's the, that, that's the, that's how familiar spirits operate. Familiar spirits will talk about your past. They will tell you things about what happened. They will tell you things about the present. They will tell you things that you are already aware of. This is why when an intrusive thought comes, it is a familiar spirit. It can also be a familiar spirit that begins to remind you of your ex. Remind you about what happened when you felt so good, when you had this freaky sexual encounter with your ex. A familiar spirit that's familiar with your ex will begin to speak to you. And then what happens is you go to sleep at night and you start having intrusive dreams. Dreams 
that you don't want, but they're invading you and you're seeing your ex in your dreams and you're fornicating with your ex. And you wake up and you say, oh my gosh, I don't want to have that dream. But something in your flesh is like, mm, and you're thinking of them now. There was a seed that was planted in your dreams. Now during the day, your mind is on it. You're thinking of it. Now there's an imagination and the devil just waiting for you to bite at it. The devil's waiting for you to bite at it until you text that person, you DM that person, you see what they're up to and you start talking to them. And then boom, you find yourself in adultery. You find yourself in fornication. There are intrusive thoughts. And then there are intrusive dreams. Now, the devil will try to remind you of the things that you once loved, the people that you once cared for, the times where you got drunk. And without knowing it, those are intrusive thoughts because the, the devil will come with a very quiet voice, but aggressive. Remember that time, the good old days, back in the day before you were holy and righteous, and you'll be like, man, I had so much fun and I wasn't doing this whole fasting and prayer thing. And you listen to the voice and you do it. Now, the solution to purging these thoughts of the past are prayer and fasting. The solution is prayer and fasting fasting will kill the flesh and starve out the desires okay so fasting does not only crucify you know your, your flesh but it crucifies the intrusive thoughts the things that have been planted in your mind and it crucifies the desires you will notice that the voices in your head and the desires of your flesh will begin to fade and you must keep this up until you no longer have triggers and weaknesses because the Lord has strengthened you in that area. You see, when you go into the prayer and fasting to overcome intrusive thoughts and the desires of your flesh, those desires and those thoughts will slowly fade. They will fade. The dreams will start fading, fading. It doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean you just stop praying and fasting. It will fade. But you must keep going and you may see it sprout up again, but it will fade. It, the devil will make it sprout up again, retaliate even harder. So you get discouraged. Keep going. It will fade. It will fade. It will fade. And what was once your weak, weakness now becomes your testimony. Come on, can I get an amen in the comments? What was once your weakness? It's now your testimony. I was once a, a person that was addicted to porn and masturbation. It's no longer my weakness. I no longer get triggers. Because if you get triggers, this means you're not fully delivered. If you get triggers. If you go to the beach and you see a half-naked woman and something triggers you, this means you're not delivered. It means you're not delivered. Because there's a donkey inside of you that's just like, uh, uh, needs to come out in the name of Jesus. You need to get to a point where even if you are walking downtown Toronto or Chicago and you see a, 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 a gay parade and everyone's naked, you need to get to a point where the weaknesses in you are gone, the triggers are gone. To the point where you can walk past it and not be like, oh my God, I'm about to fall in sin. Oh my God, I'm going to go home and get a magazine. Oh my God, I'm going to go do these things. You, because you must understand that you, there will be times where you will see commercials. You will see things outside that are going to be sexually immoral. Now, are you going to hide yourself in your home all the time and go like this? No, you need to have the capacity to be like, and walk past it and be like, this doesn't affect me no more because I've been delivered. get to that place because if I'm at the gym and I have a muscle shirt on and I'm working out and you're saying man of God I'm, I'm cover yourself because I'm lusting no you have the problem because when I play basketball I wear the same muscle shirt my muscles are showing if you're lusting you have the problem it's not me it is you there is a spirit you are getting intrusive thoughts because of the spirits you're not dealing with because you're not killing your flesh 
and you're looking at people who are not even dressed provocative and you're falling into lust. Those triggers and weaknesses will leave because the Lord has strengthened you in that area. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So you're saying you can't be righteous. You can't live pure, but the Lord's saying, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Now, what area in your life do you need the Lord to help you? What, what area of your life? You need to pray that prayer, that verse and say, Lord, your word says that we should not fear because you are with us. It says, do not be dismayed for you are my God. You, it says that you will strengthen me and you will help me. It says you will, you, will, you will uphold me with your righteous hand. Now, there's something else I must say. There are some people that have intrusive thoughts that come by way of witchcraft. There are some people that get intrusive thoughts by ways of witchcraft. <laughs> Did you know that there's certain people where they will get a voodoo doll? Give me one moment. You see, the devil's a liar. He's always trying to stop this stream, but it's not going to happen. The devil is going to try to to stop us, but it's not going to happen. We not going to, the sound's not going to keep off. You feel me? The sound ain't going to keep off. Okay? Ain't going to keep off in Jesus' name. So, like I was saying, like I was saying, like I was saying, you can have intrusive thoughts by ways of witchcraft. There are people, <laughs> Jesus. there are people who will get a voodoo doll. I don't have any type of anything that can look like a doll. So I'm going to use this remote right here. There were people that they will get a voodoo doll and they will curse you. They will curse you. They will send workers that this person needs depression. This, I want this person to commit suicide. This person this, And they begin to do voodoo against you. And then this voodoo and these curses begin to manifest as an invasion of thoughts. Voices that are strong. Heal yourself. Destroy yourself. You're stupid. You're ugly. You're going to die. And you're always fearful. When you're driving your car. You're always fearful. You begin to dictate your life. Because of those thoughts, there's an invasion coming from an altar. There are thoughts being demonic thoughts in your mind, but they're familiar spirits. Someone doing witchcraft at an altar and sending evil spirits to torment you. The same spirit in the Garden of Eden that came to Eve to intrude, invade her mind, to seduce her into a way of thinking that God did not authorize her to think. It's the same spirit that begins to come to you and begin to invade your reasoning and thinking. Witchcraft is real. And they will send word curses against you. They will send word curses against you. And before you know it, you are depressed. One day you woke up and depression was there. You felt the heaviness and you went to go get a diagnosis. The Advil wasn't working. The Tylenol wasn't working. So you went to the doctor and they said you have depression. I remember one time I was, I had a dream and the Lord was showing me my dad's depression, right? Because my dad has battled depressions severely for a long time of his life, right? Now it all started, he told me that he came out of a taxi right and then as he got out of his taxi 
he felt as if someone got a hammer and smashed it on his head. It's my father. He got out of a taxi. Then he felt like someone got a hammer and smashed it on his head. And he began to scream. Oh! He began to scream. And from that point on, my dad needed depression pills. From that point on, the devil was trying my dad with anger and all these things. Now, there was one night where I went to sleep after praying and fasting, and I began to see my dad spiritually vomiting a red substance coming from his brain out of his mouth. And then I began to hear voices in my dream, and there was a man confessing of the witchcraft that he did against my father. This is in a dream, a man confessing and a woman confessing of what she did to my mother. A man confessing of what he did to my dad. And then now my dad, he used to have to always take different, a, a lot of pills, pills, pills. But God has delivered my father where he is not yoked and dependent upon these things anymore, where it takes his mind. It's a real thing. This is why you must watch what you say to another person. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who, he who hears. Because your corrupting thought can make someone commit suicide. Your corrupting thought can give birth to intrusive thoughts for somebody else, calling them stupid, fat, ugly, calling them, you know, you're this, you're ugly, you're fat. You're saying all those things and it's being seeds being planted inside of them. And you're giving life to demons in that person. You are cursing that person. And if that person doesn't know their identity and authority in Christ, they will believe and entertain what you are saying. Then they will try to go get Botox and go to Argentina to get a BBL and all these things. And they die on the table. They try to do all these extreme things because their self-worth was attacked because of somebody else's corrupting talk. And it's not only because of a person's corrupting talk, but it's also because some people use witchcraft to speak word curses. The Bible, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, but avoid all avoid all irrelevant babble and godless chatter with its profane empty words, for it will lead to further ungodliness. Uh, but avoid all irreverent babble and godless chatter with its profane empty words for it will lead to further ungodliness so when you continue to when you talk bad about yourself when you think bad about yourself when you talk bad about other people what begins to happen is that you're 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 projecting further ungodliness you're going to lead that person and lead yourself into further ungodliness further depression further anxiety further all of these things Do you understand me? Now, I want to give you one more point right here. I'm going to give you one more point right here, okay? Fear is something that can give the devil legal grounds to intrude the thoughts of God's people, okay? Fear can be the legal grounds for the enemy to, to, to intrude the thoughts of God's people. The Bible says it like this in Psalms chapter 55, verse one through five. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and mourn and moan noise, noisily. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me and in wrath, they hate me. My heart is severely pained within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have 
come upon me and horror has overwhelmed me. See, this prayer is, he is saying that because of the voice of the enemy, I'm afraid. And horror has overwhelmed me. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my com complaint and moan aggressively and loudly because of the voice of the enemy. Now, many of you are victims because of the voice of your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your baby daddy, your mother, your husband, whoever. You cannot allow this to be. You must know your authority and identity in Christ so firmly that it doesn't matter what people say. Because fear is a spirit. Jesus said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, for, for God has not given us. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So the spirit of fear is coming against your power and your sound mind. Because where fear is, there is no sound mind. Because you're like this at night. I don't want to. I don't want to try out for this team because I might not make it. Uh, I don't want to preach because what if I mess up? Uh, I can't make content because what if nobody likes it? I don't have the words to say. I can't do this. So you, the devil cripples you by fear. I used to, be, fear, hey, fear used to drive me. I, I remember when I first started doing Facebook lives and stuff. I first started doing it, right? And the first time I went live, I, I only used to do pre-recorded videos. The first time I went live, there was only like seven people joining. I didn't have influence. Seven people came on and people were just typing. And then a voice was telling me, log off, log off, log off. And what I used to do, I used to like have to swipe the comments or swipe the screen so I wouldn't see the comments. And that my heart would just be pacing, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. and the voice was like, get off, you can't do this, get off, get off. And I would turn the live off. And people would message me and be like, why'd you turn it off? And I would get so afraid and I would be like, I'm afraid for no reason. The fear of man just gripped me and I couldn't, I couldn't go live. I was like, I can't. For what? Then one day I said, I can't do this anymore. I went on, I opened up Facebook and I went live and I kept going and going and going. There was three people watching me. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and it went higher till my Facebook went to 122,000 people, and my Instagram 87,000, and my YouTube 20,000, and TikTok 364,000. This could not be unless I overcame the spirit of fear, because the spirit of fear brought forth in mega intrusive thoughts in my life. I used to be the most shyest person, the most fearful person in every way. But God deliver me. And the Lord wants to deliver many of you tonight. He wants to deliver you from intrusive thoughts. He wants to deliver you from the voice of the enemy. God wants to set you free from whatever creeps at the night and tells you to masturbate. God wants to set you free from the voice that tells you to commit fornication. God wants to set you free from the voice that tells you to be fearful. God wants to set you free from that evil spirit. God wants to set you free from the shame and the guilt that is in your mind. God wants to renew you right now. He wants to set you free. Yes. God is going to set many of you free tonight. What is it? What is the addiction? What is the thought in your mind that's always going and being repetitive? What is the thought in your mind? Type it in the comments. Is it lust? Is it anger? Is it blasphemy? What is it? it is, is it aggression? What is it? What is the thing that is repeating that you continually ignore, that you continually just uh, fall to all the time? What is it? What is it? Because the Lord wants to set you free because this is a mental stronghold. 
This thing has not been dislodged for so long. This thing has not been moved for so long. But the Spirit of God wants to renew your mind. The Spirit of God wants to deliver you tonight. The Spirit of God wants to set you free so you are no longer a victim. Maso queridiosa. Strongholds are being removed from the from the mind tonight. Lesu remande su cabanda et alavaconde ye conde rio samanda. There's even a stronghold that the Lord is showing me right now regarding anti progression, regarding poverty. Where the enemy wants you to believe that this is your fate, uh, that nothing's uh, nothing's going to get better. Now these voices, the Lord says, that have been also speaking to your parents. They have spoken to your grandparents and they have accepted their fate. They have just been saying, you know, we just need to praise God and be thankful for what we have. And there's been an intrusion, but this has not uh, been the will of God for your life. Uh, and there shall be a breaker anointing that will set your mind free from the mindset of accepting generational poverty accepting generational sickness this thing shall be broken in the name of jesus christ of nazareth you're getting your divine imaginations back you're getting your creative ability back where you will have a vision and build the business the bible says that i will bless the work of your hands you're getting your vision back the bible says in habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 write the vision down and make it plain and the Bible also reads, without vision, my people perish. Oh God, we pray tonight that there would be a restoration of godly imaginations, that there will be a restoration of innovation, that you will give us a mind of a creative ability and not a mind of perversion, not a mind of fear, God. Help us to know our identity and authority in you. Help us, Lord, to perceive what you say say about us help us lord to recognize that that we are a royal priesthood help us to recognize that we are sons and daughters of god help us to recognize that we have the authority over our flesh and the intrusive thoughts father we pray in the name of jesus that there would be a deliverance that will take place tonight and I even see things concerning the mind, like pricks within the mind, like needles within the mind. The Lord is setting you free right now. I see things within the mind. Mental warfare. I command every demonic force every spirit of witchcraft that has been sent against your mind i command it to be broken every ungodly thought that has been rooted in your mind i command this ungodly thought to be destroyed even now in the name of jesus i command it to be broken right now come on we're dealing with it right now, right now. Come on, we break it. Every blasphemous thought, every intrusive thought of anger, every intrusive thought of homosexuality, every intrusive thought of pornography, covetedness, envy, jealousy i break it in the name of jesus uh, and i command these thoughts uh, to be dislodged uh, off your mind uh, by reason of the blood of jesus i say let go of god's people now i say let go of god's people now in the name of jesus yes it's breaking now it's breaking now. It's breaking now. Come on, you're going through deliverance right now. Oh, Ramaman She Yimando, every force of darkness that has that has rooted in your mind where you keep having sexual dreams where you keep having encounters in the night as you dream. I command it to break off your mind. I command to break it off your mind. 
I command it to be broken off your mind. May the spirit of bewitchment, may the spirit of witchcraft be broken off your mind. Shake it to the adorable Sanda. Let soon they aman so yamando repeke raman so terviansa. It's breaking. The generational way of thinking of poverty. I command it to be broken. I command it to be broken. Some of you are going through deliverance right now. The Lord is setting your mind free right now. The Lord is setting your mind free right now. Whoa. He's setting your mind free right now. Oh, Rabbi Shatta. He's setting your mind free right now. Remanso. He's setting your mind free right now. Be delivered now from anxiety. Be delivered now from depression. Be delivered now from hopelessness in the name of Jesus. Oh, Shirabanzo. Repe Kanaman so terivianza. Repe Kusabanda Raban so torobo santa. May your you may your boyfriend, your girl friend your fiance may they no longer be intruders of your purity may they no longer be the voices that lead you into wickedness in the name of jesus i pray for deliverance by reason of the blood of jesus even the way how you receive information may there be a purification of your mind and may every force of miscommunication how you perceive how you receive may it be broken in the name of jesus Oh, Raman Seriosa Kiriosa. Those of you that are going through deliverance, I want you to type it in the comments. I want you to put your hand on your head right now. Put your hand on your head right now. Okay? Oh, shut. Just place your head on your head right now. Oh, man, see, Amando. Yeah. I want you to decree and declare after me. Decree and declare after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I command every imagination and thought to be brought down in Jesus' name. I cast down every spirit of depression, lust, anxiety in the name of Jesus. I cast down every negative way of thinking in the name of Jesus. I cast down every intrusive thought in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding will come upon me now. My mind is free. My mind is liberated. I shall not have intrusive dreams from the enemy. In Jesus' name, now I shall pray for you. Now I command every evil force on your mind to be broken in the name of Jesus. I command every evil force to be broken off your mind in the name of Jesus. Right now, I command it to be broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that's within you, you can pray for yourself. You can lay hands on yourself because of the power of the Holy Spirit that's within you. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous are effective and powerful. So your prayers are working. Decree and declare over yourself. Pray as David prayed in the book of Psalms. He prayed unto God and God will touch him. In the same way, say, Lord, my heart hurts. Place your hand on your heart. Place your, place your hand on your head and pray by reason of the blood of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Shanta Rabba Koze Teririosa. E Rama Man Shoto Robo Santa Rabba. Come on, if you're manifesting and going through deliverance right now, I want you to type it in the comments. If you're manifesting and going through deliverance right now, I want you to type it in the comments. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, re ba 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 sha ko ndo robo se ke te re. Yo so ndo robo zi ke ri bi anda ba sata. It's breaking now in Jesus name. It's being canceled now in the name of Jesus. Now, 
I'm going to take up some prayer requests. Now, there's a lot of you in the comments. I'm going to take up some prayer requests, all right? So those of you that need a specific area of prayer, I'm going to see your name. Now, the comments are going to go really crazy. The person that gave the gift earlier, God bless you, okay? Now, I want you to type in the comments what you need specifically prayer for. And we're going to bring this up right now. We're going to break it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for every single person in the name of Jesus. I come against every intrusive thought. I come against every diabolical force, every spirit of witchcraft. I command it to be broken even now in the name of Jesus. Whatever hides in your body, whatever remains in your body, I command it to be broken now. I break it now. I break it in the name of Jesus. Whatever is hiding in your mind and saying masturbate and saying watch porn, I command those voices to fade and to leave you now and to leave you now in the name of Jesus. I pray for the fire of God to destroy every force of incubus, to, to be broken off your life, Ryan, to be broken off your life, Miss Wallace, every distraction, every force of witchcraft, we command the forces of witchcraft to begin to be broken, even now by reason of the blood of Jesus. Mark Smith said, it's like I have to burp, but it won't come out. May it come out now in Jesus' name. Every force that remaineth in your body that is attached to your mind and your soul, I say, come out in the name of Jesus. I say, come out in the name of Jesus. I say, come out in the name of Jesus. Mind fogged. May you be delivered, reader, from a mind fog in the name of Jesus. Hirobo shakaraman sekerio sokorvi andaraba. Every altar, every spirit of witchcraft, every word curse that has been sent against your mind, sent against your finances, sent against your health, we destroy it now in the name of Jesus. We come against it now by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come against it now in the name of Jesus. We come against uh, the spirit of infirmity. We break the spirit of witchcraft. Uh, we command these forces uh, to be broken now by reason of the blood of Jesus. We break it. Uh, mental lapses. Uh, we command every distraction to be broken. Father, we pray for healing within the body. In the name of Jesus, we pray for healing. Yes, we command your white blood cells, the count to increase. We pray for it now that there will be a testimony upon your life. Prophetess Quenisha, in the name of Jesus, we pray that there shall be a testimony in your life in the name of Jesus. The same way that the woman in the Bible with the issue of blood for 12 years, I pray that it shall be your portion and you will email me, you will message me, that things will go back to normal and you will say, man of God, that this has happened. I went to the doctors, I got a checkup, that things are healed, things are back into alignment. In the name of Jesus, oh, I pray for healing and restoration within your body, Konisha, by reason of the blood of Jesus. 
God fearing TV said, I'm manifesting. Yes, may it break off you all the more. I don't know your name, but I command it to leave you now. Every force that remains in your body, I command it to be broken off your mind in the name of Jesus. Who else is going through deliverance right now? Who else is manifesting right now? The Lord is setting his people free. Oh, Rabba. The Lord is setting his people for Reba. The Lord is setting his people free even now. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We call on to your name. We call on to your name, Jesus. Lord, we are thirsty for more of you, O God. Set us free from the works of the flesh. We know, Lord, that we may fall and we may stumble, but set us free from the lifestyle of the work of the flesh. Set us free, Lord Jesus, from the bondages and the strongholds of our mind, O oh God. Set us free, Jesus. Set us free, Jesus. Oh, Shinama, Yinama, Sinama, yeah. Oh, Shinama, so Yamando. Come on, God's doing it right now. You can do it. You can watch it later, Parley Simpson. Now, right now, I'm going to open up the floor for those who have any questions. I'm going to answer about... I'm going to try to answer, like I always say. I'm going to try to answer as much questions as I can for the next... Um, I'm going to try to answer as much questions as I can for the next 15 minutes. Just going to answer some questions, okay? So for those of you that has specific questions that you want to ask. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, answer some questions. So we have 15 minutes on the clock. Those of you that have specific questions, um, I want you to go ahead and ask those questions. And I'll be willing to answer the questions that you have. God's setting you free right now. Abigail Boyce. The fire of God is all over you now in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah. Any specific questions? Someone said, how long does it take you to get full fully delivered I can't tell you a time I can't tell you a place because I but you don't understand like you there's some people that get delivered on the spot now with Jesus Jesus was doing things Jesus is God right now with us we had to get into a place of fasting the disciples went around and they were casting out demons out of some people okay now there was a particular man where they couldn't set him free no matter how much to say the name of Jesus. And Jesus told them that these kinds of spirits will not come out except, except by prayer and fasting. So Jesus was telling basically the disciples that you are not God. You had to kill your flesh. You need to kill your flesh so the Holy Spirit can work in you all the more and whatnot. So it is the daily of killing our flesh and fasting to really overcome the forces of darkness. Because just as the disciples couldn't overcome certain demons, it's the same way some of us where we can feel like, man, I'm not getting delivered because you have to enter into the place of fasting. Right. Um, so, yeah. And it, yeah, so that's what it is. So I believe there's an appointed time for your deliverance, but I can't sit here and say you're going to get delivered on this day from everything. You know, I believe God will bring you through deliverance. And if, if you go, if you get delivered from everything in the moment, God bless. But I believe that when we're dealing with higher powers, um, the Lord will lead us to, into greater forms of fasting. Someone says, yes, I wonder if li lifelong laziness is also a demon spirit. So it could be like a, a spirit of influence, right? Spiritual warfare, because there's a lot of people that, let's say the mother is lazy, the father is lazy, the, the grandparents are lazy. 
the child is lazy. It's a spirit of influence to keep the people in poverty, to keep the people obese, to keep the people in a place of not wanting to do anything. Because the Bible says, I will bless the work of your hands. So the spirit of in, the evil spirit of influence will make you not want to do anything so God can bless it. Because God blesses what we build, what we try to do, you know, but this laziness will cause you to not want to do anything. Someone said, I continue to have dreams of my son's dad, and we haven't been together in over six months. They aren't sexual, but is there a reason why I got delivered from incubus spirit, but I still have the dreams? You see, number one, there could still be soul ties. There could be soul wounds, uh, trauma. There could be trauma. There could be soul, soul wounds. You may, I don't know if you still talk to them or whatnot, but... Oftentimes in dreams, the enemy, familiar spirits, will take the face of another person. Right? The enemy will take the face of another person. And also, the dream can mean that, you know, God may be just calling you to intercede for the person or pray for that person. It could be to intercede and pray for that person. Right? But sometimes the enemy will, the enemy will take the face of of another person because let's say you're having sexual dreams of uh, your ex-boyfriend from six years ago it's not your ex-boyfriend it's a familiar spirit when we get fearful or anxious thoughts do we reject rebuke or talk about it reject it rebuke it and you can talk about it too right um but you just don't want to internalize it and just ignore it you want to talk about it to someone try to get help and rebuke it go into prayer and fasting don't just say go away pray against it go into fasting do i believe in face-to-face -face relationship with jesus what do you mean by that like you're just sitting here and you're face-to-face -face with jesus what do you mean by that? I believe in a personal relationship with Jesus. And if God, if it's the Lord's will forgive us, to give us an encounter, we have an encounter. But nonetheless, it's not about um, the face-to-face -face encounters. I don't, I don't teach that. How do I pray against demonic scratches? Rebuke it, cancel in Jesus' name. Because oftentimes when people wake up with scratches and bruises uh, on their body, it's a revelation of a covenant. Okay, now this covenant is causing spiritual warfare in your life. And you're wake at, waking up and you have, you know, orgasm, human release all over your body. And then um, you're waking up with bruises and scratches over your eye, over your body and whatnot. You must break any covenant that you're associated with. Anything generational, any spirit of incubus or succubus. Because it's a real thing. I used to wake up with those things all over my body and get raped at night by demons. Um, my eyes will be open, right? That's a real thing. So for going, I would say go into fasting. Definitely go into fasting because it's a revelation of a covenant. It's not just scratches. It's something has a legality, something that's coming against you. And it's also a revelation that you may be spiritually weak in the area or spiritually um, not alert of what the covenant is. Someone said, God told me to, God told me go to a Bendigo and I obey, but I didn't know this happened. I got delivered. God bless you. Hallelujah. You got delivered. You got delivered, delivered, Adam. Amazing. God bless you. Gibson Manu said, prophet, I've been getting, I have, I haven't been getting replies from you when I send emails. Any reason, please. First of all, uh, 
I was sick the last three days, right? Uh, number two, you know, I have a child, a wife, and number three, um, you know, I do all this myself, right? So when it comes to emails, when it comes to Instagram messages, when it comes to Facebook messages, TikTok messages, YouTube messages, I do everything myself. When it comes to teachings, when it comes to putting all the technology together, I do everything myself. So sometimes it gets super exhausting and super hard for me because I'm only one person and I'm trying my hardest to help as much people as I can. So I get my influence is massive on all platforms. I think YouTube's the smallest and I get a lot of emails. So it's actually impossible for me to fulfill every person, even to fulfill 50% or even 30%. It's too hard, right? So I try to put forth teachings. I know I do a lot of exposure, but you, if you click my playlist of prayers and teachings, you'll see that I have a lot of diversity of teachings, a lot of diversity of revelations where you can go get prayer. I have a prayer playlist. I have um, a teaching playlist, a, a teaching playlist as well. Um, and you can go to that. And sometimes, you know, I respond to messages and I pray for people. I call them, I pray for them, you know, and whatnot. Um, but I would suggest, um, you know, being a part of these live streams. And when I do public mass deliverances, be a part of those. So, yeah. And if you want to join my classes, you can do that, too. So. Someone said, I need prayer, please, to, for strength to stop falling into divination channels for my heart to be softened and please stop vaping when I get upset. I don't know your name, B.A., but you have to make a choice. No spirit is making you uh, fall into divination. I'm going to pray for you, but you need to understand your identity and authority in Christ because you doing those things, it's not a demon making you do it because the first day you did it, it wasn't demon, a demon inside of you making you do it, okay? It's from what's it's what's in your mind, your lack of confidence, your lack of faith, your lack of your identity, your worry, your anxiety that's causing you to enter into the place of divination channels. OK, but I pray for you now in Jesus name that you will be delivered by reason of the blood of Jesus, that your reasoning, your thinking, your identity will be restored even now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that vaping any addiction will be canceled, any evil spirit to be broken in the name of Jesus. Where am I from? I am from Canada. Originally from, my background is, I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, but I, I live in Canada. There's, there's no distance with deliverance, Ashley. I believe I have a spiritual spouse and I need deliverance. Teresa, the best thing you can do is going to prayer and fasting to start that process. Start the process. Don't wait for a man of God. Um, start that process in your prayer and fasting. Sometimes I gasp for air when I attempt to go to sleep. Sometimes it feels like I'm choking. I believe it's from a diet, but can it be witchcraft? It can be a diet. You know, if you are, you know, if you are obese, overweight and whatnot, you can, you can have those. You're more prone to a heart attack. I'm not saying this, this is happening to you, but you can be more prone to a heart attack, more prone to gasping for air, being out of shape and whatnot. And also it can be a demonic attack. I remember my wife, super fit, right? Athlete and whatnot. She would go lay in bed and feel like she's getting choked out. Right, literally choked out, like something is on your throat, choking you out. This is the spirit of uh, Leviathan. You understand me? You must pray against that in Jesus' name. Yvonne said, you have really helped me in my prayer life. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Someone said, do we need to protect ourselves with prayer before we let someone to do deliverance for us to protect ourselves? I mean, if you're praying a prayer for protection when you're getting prayer for someone, you probably shouldn't go to that person, right? Because my, my thing is this, what is convicting you to pray protection over you when you're getting prayed for by that person? So if there's a, if there's a, if there's a, a feeling inside of you, 
of man i gotta pray i don't want anything evil to come to enter into me then don't go get prayer from that person right because there are people who have a genuine anointing and then there are false prophets there are simon the sorcerers that are operating by the spirit of witchcraft you understand I me mean? so if there's fear that now a lot of people have fear where even if they go to anyone they start praying lord protect me it's not a bad prayer but now you're praying from the place of like fear Let me add another 10 minutes onto here uh, to answer more questions. Let's go another 15 to answer these questions because I kind of like these questions. Okay. I have been stuck for the last 12 years. Prayer. I've prayed and fasted many times, yet no progress. What am I doing wrong? Now, you got to understand that prayer and fasting is not the thing that just makes everything happen. Uh, you need revelation and understanding, right? The Bible talks about that there is a God that reveals mysteries in heaven, and he uh, revealed unto Nebuchadnezzar what would happen in the latter days. So God will bring revelation. So if you go prayer and fasting without revelation, it's like you're just whatever. There's no there's no revelation. You, you, you don't know what you're going against. This is why the Bible talks about that God reveals mysteries in the darkness. Right, God unravels mysteries because a lot of people get into a place of prayer and fasting and just praying, 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 and they have no insight. Okay, let's say this, right? Let's say you go into prayer and fasting and your mom is a witch or your dad is a Freemason and they have put you in a covenant. They have cursed you and all these things. They're horrible parents. Let's say that, right? You go into your prayer and fasting and you don't know why you're poor and things are not working. Why this is happening? Lord, why is this happening? But you don't, you don't realize that your parents, you don't know that your mother is a witch, that your father is a witch, that they serve demons. There was a woman I prayed for. Um, she was Haitian and both of her parents went to voodoo. Okay. Um, and she was always wondering, why is my life like this? Why? Now she was a byproduct of the gods that their mother, that her, that her mother worshiped. Okay. Their parents were both into voodoo. This lady became a Christian. She wasn't always a Christian. She became a Christian. And the parents were into voodoo. So if you just go into prayer and fasting and you have no revelation of what you are praying and fasting about and what the root is, you will remain bound. But what will happen through the grace and mercy of God is God will give you a dream, a vision of the night. Now, when you look within scripture, God will always speak to people within dreams. This is why the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 17, in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh that your sons and daughters shall prophesy, that your young men shall dream dreams, your old men shall have visions. So the Bible is telling us that we will have dreams. The Bible also says that God may speak in one way, yet in another, in a dream, in a vision of the night. When deep sleep falls upon men, God opens up their ear and seals their instruction. Right? The issue is sometimes we don't perceive, we don't recognize, we don't have the interpretation of the dream and whatnot. So when I, I've been in the place of always fasting and praying and seeing no type of progression until the Lord began to reveal things unto me of covenants in my mother, and my, in my mom's side of the family and my dad's side of the family. So my mom and dad were products of, of anti-progression. So when I'm born, I'm a byproduct of them and they're a byproduct what's within their family. So it's like a generational thing. And once the Lord began to bring revelation unto me, my life began to shift because I was now doing prayer and fasting with revelation. And now my prayers became precise. Now, this is why the Bible says that the Holy Spirit knows our weakness. When we do not know what to pray, the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. So when we're speaking in tongues, not speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit is praying on our behalf with the mysteries that we do not know of, praying about the things that we are not alert about. Repazuto, we're praying unto the Father. And the Holy Spirit knows our weakness that we sometimes we, we're not going to know everything. We can't pray everything because we're just going to be like, oh, I don't know what to pray anymore. I don't know why I'm like this. This is why it's imperative to have your prayer language and pray in, pray in tongues. It's between you and God. Should we follow our feeling of fear? What if it's from the enemy? You should never fear. Fear doesn't come from God. Fear doesn't come from God. How do you fight lustful thoughts? I taught that in this teaching. You got to run it back and watch it again. 
I have other teachings about that. I already, I already taught about that already. Um, do I do one-on-one -on -one deliverance? Yes, but like, it's not likely that I respond. Um, sometimes, because I get so many messages, I I do respond to some people, right? Because and I'll pray for them, but like, I just get so many messages. It's hard. I'm telling you. Remember also, don't depend on deliverance. After you get deliverance, you should read Bible and keep yourself on righteous path. Deliverance should not become like some kind of retreat shortcut. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree with that. Deliverance is not a shortcut. Deliverance is something you must maintain and you must remain in the place of righteousness, a pure path, reading your Bible, uh, getting plugged into a church because iron sharpens iron. God bless your baby, Jacqueline. Noah Hines. Yeah, I like that guy. I talked to him a few times. Noah Hines. How long should we fast for to get uh, delivered from spiritual spouse? The Bible says that we are a living sacrifice. So you got to you got to sacrifice, you know, yourself in prayer and fasting and be in a place of. Um, you know, just if, you, if you're really serious about deliverance. Then you got to be serious like Daniel when Daniel went on a 21 day fast for interpretation of a dream. Now, Daniel went 21 days of fasting for an interpretation of a dream. But some of you won't even go seven days when you're dealing with an evil spirit. You see, we got our priorities messed up. And it makes me wonder sometimes if we're actually serious about our deliverance. Because the deliverance, if we're actually serious about our life, we would do these sacrificial things that Jesus told us, Luke chapter 18, verse one, men always ought to pray and faint not this kind of spirit not leave except by prayer and fasting. I do one on ones here and there. I'm going to lie to you. Also, I want to ask, can we still fast for God? while we have busy lives at work. And so is it that so we need to fill ourselves with God's word and pray while we fast. You must pray while you fast because if you fast and it, yeah, there's no prayer, it's like a hunger strike or like fasting to lose weight because Jesus said these kinds of spirits will not leave except by prayer and fasting. And biblically speaking, anyone that would fast, they would degrade themselves going to prayer and worship dressed in sackcloth and roll over in ashes because it was all about communing with the Lord and saying, Lord, answer my prayer. Lord, hear my cry. So if you're fasting without praying, you're wasting your time. Wasting your time. In the dream, how can I discern between the devil's voice and God's voice? Now, you will never truly be able to discern the voice of God in general if you don't have intimacy with the Lord. Right? The Bible says my sheep know my voice and they follow me. So even within your dreams, if your spiritual fervency, if your spiritual state is very on fire or it's very alert, even within your dreams, you'll begin to, you'll be able to discern that this is not God, that this is not my mother. But if you are weak spiritually or you, you struggle to pray or you're struggling with sin, this will also manifest in your dreams. Now, this is why a lot of people that have dreams and they get killed in their dreams because they don't have a, a lifestyle of prayer, fasting, or, you know, they're dealing with something spiritual and they don't know what it is. So they're always victims in their dreams, right? But those that become alert, pray and fast and become intimate and live in purity and have strong prayer lives, they will notice victory in their dreams. They will notice victory in their dreams or they're killing the demon or they're overcoming this and overcoming that. Now, if you're always a victim in your dreams, you're spiritually weak or you are in bondage. So why do you need tongues? That's where you got to study the Bible. The Bible says um, uh, when we the Holy Spirit knows our weakness, when we do not know what to pray, the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf with groanings too deep for words, with word, wordless groans. Tongues is prayer unto God. There are different types of tongues. There are tongues where you speak and you release a message and you need an interpreter. And then there are tongues where you pray unto God. The Bible says that 
Um, let me pull up that verse for you. But the Bible says that um, he that speaketh in the tongue. Give me a second. In first Corinthians chapter 14, verse two, for he that speaketh in, a, in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that, so yeah, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he he speaketh mysteries. So the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. So when you see me speak, when you see me praying in tongues, Raman so I'm actually praying. I'm praying to God. Um, I'm not like releasing a message unto you guys. Now, if I was releasing a message unto you guys sitting in front of a church, then you need an interpreter because you're going to be like, what are you talking about? You're talking to us. But if the whole congregation goes up into prayer and I say, let's pray in tongues to God, let's all pray to God. And we all start praying in tongues. That's OK, because we're praying to God. That's what the Bible says. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, unknown tongue, um, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now you can't say, oh, you need an interpreter to speak unto God. That makes no sense. You shouldn't follow people that do that, bro. Partly. Thank you, Charmaine. How do you receive tongues? You, you gotta be patient. Um, there was a promise of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts when Jesus promised uh, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, wait, He's, he said, do not leave Jerusalem. He said, tarry in the place of Jerusalem, which means remain in the present, remain in the place of Jerusalem, do not leave. So Jesus gave them instructions. So they waited for the promise, right? Because um, Jesus promised that he would leave and his helper would come, the Holy Spirit. And they waited, they waited, they waited, and they began to pray. And all accord, they, they listen to the instructions of Jesus and they begin to pray, right? And await the promise of the Holy Spirit. And as they prayed, uh, the presence of God came. Okay. Because they were all in accord. They were all agreeing. They were all believing and waiting for the promise. The Bible says, if two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there in thy midst. Nowadays, you know, when we're in our prayer time, believing God for something, we have our iPad, we have our phone, we have all this stuff we want to do and just thinking about all these things, you know, and it distracts us from actually having an encounter with the Lord. Right. And this is why the Bible says, put your set your mind on the things above and not the things below. So you need to go before the Lord in prayer and fasting and saying, Lord, I want to be filled. I want to be. And there will come a time will happen. That's how it happened with me. Nobody laid hands on me. I was just in my closet. Actually, when people were laying hands on me, it didn't happen, right? Uh, they were just like, come on, come on, come on. And it, it didn't happen, right? But it happened in my closet when I was praying at the age of 22. How can you live holy before God? You know, it's guarding your life by the word of God. That's how you can guarding your life by the word of God. Right. You just asked me a question that's biblical. The Bible says in Psalms 119 verse nine, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word, right? That's what it says. Psalms 119. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? by living according to your word. So you guard your life by the word. So if you know the word, guard your life by it. But if you know the word and you choose to do wickedness, nobody can help you. You understand me? But you must guard your life according to the word of God. When the Bible says flee from sexual morality, literally just flee. God bless you, Vanessa. Thank you so much for your gift. God bless you. May God favor you and bless you all the more with your continued generosity all the time. May the Lord bless you in every way. May peace be your portion, Vanessa, in Jesus' mighty 
name and may it favor you in everything that you're believing God for. And may peace and happiness, may, may, may your story end the way that you've been praying for it to end in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, may there be a completion where you're at now with your life, a completion. May God add to your life. How do you cast an unclean spirit out? Just say, come out in Jesus name. But you have to have an assurance that you have, you have the authority to do it, right? You have to do it by faith in Jesus name. Thank you, Sharon, for your gift. What is your prayer request, Sharon? Thank you so much. God bless you. I love praying for people that just always give. It's just, it's a blessing, man. Part of the reason we have the setup that we have. Um, What do you guys think about the word of faith and people who think they can get financial blessings and some claim there's a curse that affects finances. So there's nothing wrong with the word of faith. Now, declaring that you're going to be a millionaire, name it, claim it, doesn't mean that you're going to be a millionaire. Everything has to be based upon the will of God. Now, the Bible says, I will bless the work of your hands. So if you're striving to be successful in your business financially, God will bless your vision. He'll bless the work of your hands. Does it mean you'll be a billionaire? A millionaire? No. Right? Is there some people that are destined to be a millionaire or wealthy? Yes. King David was destined to be wealthy. King Solomon was destined to be wealthy. So there could be a calling in your life to enter into a particular job or institution where you're going to be a millionaire. There could be a call in your life where God has written out your destiny, where you're going to be a uh, in the NBA and be a millionaire. Right? So that call or that anointing can be upon your life. Now the whole name it, claim it does. It does, just doesn't work like that. It has to be the will of God for your life and witchcraft can hold a lot of people, um, down financially, especially, um, when people, um, cause there's a lot of people that do money rituals. Okay. Uh, I don't know if the Western world knows much about this, but there's a lot of people that do money rituals or they give their money, um, to psychics and mediums, or they give their money to, all these false prophets and people that operate in witchcraft because they believe they'll get more back or they believe that God will bless their finances. So what happens is that they have now given legal grounds to an evil spirit against their money because they've sown into bad ground. The Bible says you will reap what you sow, right? And the Bible says that when you lend unto the poor, when you give unto the poor, you're lending unto God and God will repay you uh, for what you have done. So uh, in that, in, 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 with that being said, you know, if you, give unto witchcraft, you will be repaid with evil. When you give unto God, like the Bible says, God will repay you. I ain't gonna tell you what city I'm from. Prophet Elijah, are you living pure before God? That's my question to you. Are you living pure before? I know you're a young man, but you gotta live pure before God, my buddy. What does it mean if you always have dreams of people trying to kill you? What do you, what, what do you guys think about? No. What does it mean if you always have dreams? Someone is trying to kill you now. I used to have dreams of, uh, someone always trying to kill me. Like I would have dreams of my legs being amputated and God revealed that there was, that was the spirit of anti-progression, which means that in my life, I would never go forward. I would always, and this is, that was a season of my life where um, I had no job, no credit card, no debit card, no car, no driver's license, nothing working. I was living at my parents' house and this is in 2017, absolutely nothing working. And I began to struggle and I'd have dreams of my right leg being amputated, um, 
both my legs being amputated. And I would have dreams, people trying to kill me, throw me off cliffs, and I'd wake up. So it's just a spirit of, it's a spirit of death. Because the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So there's a spirit on assignment to take you out. There's a spirit on assignment, and it can come in different ways, right? A lot of people die prematurely, or they get certain infirmities, because they've had certain dreams that were revealing that there was a spirit trying to kill them. And they never addressed it. And they never went through deliverance. Never prayed about it. And without knowing, 10 years, 15 years down the line, 10 years down the line, these things begin to manifest. And they have a terminal illness or they die from a random freak accident. And all these things happen, but the revelations were in their dreams. Marcel, God bless your ministry, brother. Thank you so much. May, may God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Marcel, Louise, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Can you pray against those things 100%? Tris, Relaxion Channel. I know you often pray for people and encourage them, but I just pray that God would also bless you and your family and continue to strengthen you in your ministry. Thank you so much. That means a lot. We definitely need prayers. Um, we I appreciate it a lot. It's not, it's, not, it's not often that I get people praying for me or people that... Um, tell me they're praying for me it's very um very minimal but um those that pray thank you so much uh because we did i tell you i deal with spiritual warfare <laughs> especially with all the exposure i do and the deliverance i do i deal with it i'm telling you i deal with a lot of people's demons um i deal with the exposure stuff and i deal with retaliation so If we live pure for God, does then Jesus deliver us from curses and all that without needing for someone to do deliverance for us? I really look forward to live righteously. So living righteously is just the foundation. It's the number one thing you should do. Now, when Jesus would cast out demons out of people and heal them, he would say sin no more. Right? So it's not just it's not just about um It's not just about um, living pure, but it's actually going through deliverance because people, Jesus would bring people through deliverance and he would tell them sin no more. So you could sin no more and still go through deliverance. Jacqueline Espinoza. Thank you for the gift, Jacqueline. You said, God bless you, prophet. I'm praying for God's justice. I want to file for full custody for my baby boy he's two and i have three month I have three month old. i have three months i have a three month old as well thank you i pray for you now in jesus name that justice will be upon your life for your child i pray that the will of god will take place i don't know the story between you and the father you and your, your baby's father but i pray that the will of god and what is just will take place I pray for the justice of God over this situation, over this custody, that God will allow that child to be in the hands of the right person, that God will favor you in the name of Jesus. And God bless you, Prophet, uh, Prophetess Kanisha. Thank you so much. And Tyrencia Wallace. Sorry if I butchered your name. I'm so sorry. Elijah, just watch my teaching over again. Just watch my teaching. I know you're young. Uh, just watch my teaching. Take the time to watch it. I recommend you, uh, Elijah, to watch the teaching of um, perversion, the alteration of the mind, and then this one. Watch it from the beginning. Someone said, I actually found you when John Maria's Ramirez called you out. So thank you, Jesus. 
when John Ramirez called me out, you are so funny. Now, John Ramirez actually raised my influence. He didn't know that. When he called me out, he actually brought thousands of people to my channel and they begin to hear the truth and go through deliverance. So funny. Is it against the will of God to let a fornicator live in my house, even if it's my son who moved back in? Bad things keep happening. I mean, at the end of the day, it's your son, right? I don't think it's a bad thing. I think that you being the father of the household, you have the jurisdiction over the home, the legal jurisdiction. So nothing can happen uh, because you are the authority, the father of the household. Now, if your prayer life is weak and stuff like that, then paranormal stuff will take place because you know, your son, anyone that lives in sin is like a walking altar, uh, they're like a host or like a conduit for evil spirits, right? This is why the Bible says that um, we must be living sacrifices, right? So when we have the Holy Spirit, we're like a conduit for the Holy Spirit, right? To move and to work with vessels. Now, when you live in wickedness, we're a conduit and we're vessels for wickedness. So you may experience spiritual warfare, paranormal activity and things like that, because fornication is not just fornication. It opens up the door to evil spirits. All my hair, lashes, eyebrows fell out. Is this spiritual? Could be, could not be. Depends what's going on in your life. Someone said, I had a dream about John Maria's with an unnaturally long tongue drinking out of a shot glass after he called you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Listen, he got mad at me just because. I told him, not because I told him, because I made a post and I was like, why is John Maria's doing a conference with people who teach him the third eye, witchcraft, divination, and all that stuff? And the lady I warned him about, I have a video of her putting oil in her hands and licking it with her tongue and on her lips to be able to like get influence and prophesy and have this blessing and stuff like that in these private schools, right? Of Lovi. So. John Maria's the conference of the witch, right? And he got mad at me. Well, I don't care. Yeah, she false for sure. I actually love 1000% false. Listen, I speak from facts, eh? I have, I've seen these people's private schools. You will, your mind will be blown. If you don't know the word of God, listen, I've, what some of these false prophets project to you on Facebook Live and their church, what's actually happening in their private schools is blasphemy. You know me. But anyhow, guys, listen, I'm going to end this. I'm exhausted. Um, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for your gifts. Thank you guys so much for sewing. Some of you have been sewing through PayPal and Cash App. I'm going to pray over those. So make sure you just type your prayer request in the PayPal or Cash App as I've been praying. Um, so God bless you guys. I love you guys. I hope you are blessed um, tonight. I don't know why this looks so weird. Peace. But I hope you are blessed tonight. It's almost 1 a.m. here. I hope um, I answered a lot of your questions. I prayed. Um, and you really received insight tonight. Okay. I love you guys. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take care. And also, if you want to join my marriage class coming up, the link is in um, pinned on the description. If you want to join my two day uh, mentorship class for singles and married couples, it's happening on the S December 16th and the 17th uh, via Zoom. We're going to deal with a lot of things um, for singles and married couples. Those who have been divorced, those who are going through the divorce. We're going to deal with the natural and spiritual issues. So if you just click the link, you can see all the information there. If you want to be a part of it, just click the link at the top. Um, anyways, guys, I'm out of here. God bless you guys. See you guys. 
next week in the class. 10 days, I believe. 10 days in the class on Zoom. God bless you. Much love in Jesus' name.